we're glad you're here and uh, we're excited to get started and tell you a little bit about fourth grade. Um, my name is Peter Buxenbaum and uh, taught here at Kingsville Day School for, I think this is my 19th year, so in my 15th year in fourth grade. So. And I am Christine Brennan. Uh, this is my fifth year at GDS, but I was doing the math this morning probably 23, 24 years teaching primarily in fourth, so I actually have a strong love of fourth grade, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd take a minute to have you all introduce yourselves to everybody and just tell us if you if this is your first child going through fourth grade at GDS, if you've had children before, some of you are family faces, but just so we can get a sense of the people in the room. Do you want to start us off, Ed? <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Ed Dunnersley, and I have a first time fourth grader here at GDS. Um, I have a co assistant in the middle school. And Caitlin? Okay. Hi, I'm Seema. Um, I'm first time fourth grader next year, and she's in the end. Do you want to explain? Marvella, did I catch you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marvella. Um, I have a first time fourth grader. Elizabeth Payon, my daughter Liza will be the first, my first to go through fourth grade. I'm Lane King, and I'm the only one who has. <laughs> this is my second child to go through fourth grade, so Drew. And my name is Denise Frost and Chaprock, and yeah. our son CJ is going to fourth grade, and he's our only. You will always do this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spoken for. <laughs> I'm Lois Chen, and. Lillian is our third and last. Thank you for that. I'm Kristen Kerrigan. Rory will be my second and last. <laughs> I'm Tessa, and Rose is my first. We stepsons many years ago. Hold up the program. Brittany Lensweiler, Larry School Counselor. Okay. Great. Well, we're glad you're here. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do is try to have a little fun and play an activity that fourth graders um, engage in. Um, this one is a, a Kahoot. How many anybody played a Kahoot before? Okay, a few of you have. So if you take out your phone and go onto the internet and go to kahoot.it, www.kahoot.it, We'll see who knows a lot about Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got the it's I might have to turn it down. It's going to be really loud. Well. Can I do it here? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. so put that game pin in. And we'll see your name pop up. That's all right. You can use your first name. Yep. Fourth graders like to use emojis and all kinds of stuff. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. February second's tomorrow, so we had eight out of nine. Get that one right. You are fast. Very <laughs> fast. So fast. Oh, no, it's Better get your fingers ready. <laughs> Here's our third question. The groundhog is what kind of animal? <laughs> oh, that kind of animal. Oh, I'm sure I know this. So anybody who knows me, so I'll flip to the next slide. I can put it there. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a reading nerd. My kids will tell you that. So um, I love reading. I love words. I love anything that has to do with that. So I've been teaching reading to both classes this year. And then when I've got Pete's group, my group goes to him, and he's doing science or social studies. And then we flip that back, and my group does the same thing. So it's been working beautifully. We're going to continue it next year. Um, I think that it's helpful because then we're really focusing our passion and our energy on that one unit and really doing it well. Um, and the kids have responded really nicely to it. These are just some pictures of students doing some partner reading. Um, we do a lot of buddy turn and talk on the rug, so we might read a little bit of a story or an article, and then they'll turn and talk to either discuss a question or make a prediction. Um, we do a lot of that kind of discussion piece. Uh, the top left is a picture of a book club and what we'll do at the, we do a fiction unit, a non-fiction unit, and at the end of the year to go with our American Revolutionary Unit, we'll do historical fiction book clubs and the students will be given a book. They'll be put in book clubs according to their reading ability, but they'll all be books about the revolution and they'll all be doing the same, uh, they'll have the same tasks and the same activities just on a book that we call their just right level. So we talk to them a lot about making sure. Um, throughout the year, just to give you an idea, they'll be assigned a bin that will have books that are their level with maybe a one or two level difference. They can challenge themselves a little bit, uh, but they're never really going to go to the shelf and just grab you know, a book that's not something that they can read independently during reader's workshop time. So just to give you an idea. Uh, but we have, a, we have a blast. We have a lot of fun, lots of good stuff. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about poetry coffee shops. So this is um, fun event. I think a woman named Miss Goodman brought this to the fourth grade years ago. Um, but 
we, we focus in March and April um, around National Poetry Month, um, creating interesting poems. We focus on uh, different styles of poetry. And then ultimately, uh, we put that together in an anthology, and then we invite parents in for the Poetry Coffee Shop. And it's, we think it's a really great event. Um, the kids really, the kids, yeah, it's really awesome. awesome. Yeah. The, kids, the kids run it all, they do all the work, they are the MCs, they're the greeters, they wait on tables, they serve food, um, and as well as getting up there and sharing poetry um, to, the, to the audience. So it's, it's a really phenomenal event. So it's something to look forward to. Yeah, and each class picks a different theme, so these are just a couple we've done. Western theme, this was uh, an airport terminal that one of the kids thought of. I can't remember what you did last year. We, we often end up in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, you know, Hollywood, right, right. So they, they have fun, um, fun with that. All right. Okay. Um, so, Four out of the five days every week, um, the kids will have math. We do follow the differentiation, especially for math. And so with that, kids are pre-tested before each unit. We see where they are, where their strengths are, uh, where their weaknesses might be. And then uh, we put them in a group with kids of similar ability so that um, you know, we can go at a, at a pace that's appropriate for all the kids. Um, all kids will learn the same thing. They all take the same test at the end of the unit, but um, some will, will go further with a, a topic than others. Um, we do try to make it hands-on. You can see in these pictures that kids are not just sitting, working in notebooks, they're uh, doing. Um, we do have Ann Brennan, a math specialist. So we, uh, when we, I should say, when we um, differentiate, we have three groups. So. Uh, Christine, myself, and then Ann Brennan, the math specialist in the lower, in the third and fourth grade? Second, second, second third, fourth. fourth. Okay. Mm -hmm. she, she takes a group, and so every day that we have math, kids will go off to her as well. So we have three different levels, three different teachers. And then Ann comes in once a week for an hour for an entire, for the whole homeroom and does an extension or teaches a different unit or works kind of. Um, challenge or review or a little bit of both depending on what we're learning so and they love that they all they all love that education facts are a big emphasis yes. in fourth grade so uh, as third graders are finishing up hopefully uh, spending some summer time and coming into fourth grade knowing multiplication facts because that is just a foundational piece for math in fourth grade Right, especially because we do factors and multiples, then we go on to double digit multiplying, long division, fractions, all of those concepts need those basic facts. So, I'm gonna flip. Yep. See my top first though. Um, that's incorrect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Oh no. Sorry, I had me on mine. <laughs> I swear we practiced, no. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, so we have, uh, a program that we, uh, Ann Brennan, our math specialist, sort of introduced uh, to us a while ago, or actually, it was the math specialist for her, but she brings it to our fourth graders, and it's Continental Math League, we call it CML, and um, a neat program, um, multi-step, higher level math problems that kids um, can, can choose to participate in. This is a choice program. Um, kids will practice during the lunch period once a week, and then throughout the year, there's uh, a test, a national test once, one time per month, I think November, December, uh, January, February, March is when we do it. And um, it's a six, always a six question test and we submit our best, sco best scores and then we see how we fall out uh, against schools around the country. So it's, it's a pretty neat opportunity, it's a neat program. Um, are we having, are we going to work on this? Well, we were going to ask you to take a minute to see if you could solve this one. If six widgets cost 33 cents, then 10 widgets would cost blank cents. Yeah, so, minutes, so we, can asked our, out. we asked our fourth graders to solve this, and so. Not too many of them got it, actually. I was right. You said only. Two of mine got it, but. A couple of mine. Do you think you have the answer to help? You can raise your hand. <laughs> Class is in session. <laughs> <laughs> And this would be a typical, I and mean, this is a true CML problem, so. CML test. 55? 55? It's 55, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
absolutely. So we're going to show you a video of my friend Ellie. Here's Ellie with one solution. Let's see if we can hear her. For this math problem, I drew six boxes for how many widgets equal 33 cents. Then below that, I did four more boxes for the other widgets. Each widget was five and a half cents. Six widgets were 33 cents, and four widgets were 22. And and then if you can see, I kind of tried to zoom in. She drew it out. She wrote her explanation. Um, she's pretty proud of herself. And what's great is that they, they may all come at it in a different way with a different solution, but that's something that we really foster and we encourage is, you know, a lot of times we'll share out about math problems and three different kids will get up and talk about the same problem looking at it three different ways, which is really exciting. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about CML, it's also really a fun social piece for them. They go at lunch, they eat their lunch, and they're solving math, and they're working with friends. So the majority of the grade usually participates no matter what their ability level is in math. All, I mean, I think there's, I think all the girls this year and almost all the boys. Yeah, so we, when we practice, the girls practice on Tuesdays, and so they're all together, and they, they enjoy that time just socializing and then also solving the kids are usually worried at the beginning, like, am I going to miss recess by doing this? And no, they don't miss recess. <laughs> so, um, so we get good participation. All right, well, here uh, we wanted to talk to you about a special day. It's actually coming up very soon, February 22nd. This year is Miss Lina Day. Um, children get a chance to go back in time. So these are some kids from last year. Pete's son is in the bottom right. A little cute patootie over there. Um, <laughs> So I believe it's the year 1876, and Miss Lina was O. Henry's aunt, and she formed a one-room schoolhouse. So what we do is we kind of go back in time and do the same type of thing. So the students will be given a packet with all the information, but they dress as if they're in the 1800s. They bring lunch as if they're in the 1800s. So we've had a big conversation about no Oreo cookies and no fruit roll-ups, and they need to try to think about things that they would have brought during that time period. Uh, and then Pete and I will work some magic and turn the classrooms into uh, colonial times schoolhouses, and we, we won't put the lights on, and they use slates and chalkboards, and um, we read from McGuffey's readers, and it's very rote and very, um, very much Part of what the time period would have been like. Do you want to jump in? Did I forget anything? Um, well, I enjoy it because it's very strict. So that day, very, very strict with students. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they often are very nervous because it's, it's so different. They have to line up in the hallway before they come into the classroom. They have to have an inspection. And the, 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 the three things that they're they focus on are cleanliness, truthfulness, and punctuality. So uh, they have to be clean up. Fingernails, ears. Yeah. It's a fun, fun day. And then we do quiz them. They have a month to learn the first 38 states of the union and the first 18 presidents in order. So they're given that information. They have a month to get ready and practice. So um, it's, you know, they like it. it. They get a little nervous, but it ends up being a lot of fun. It's, it's you know, rite of passage sort of thing. Kids for, for 25, I don't know, probably longer than that have been, have been experiencing this line of day in fourth grade. So it's. We, you know, it's 1876, but we sort of tie it into colonial America. Right. All right. So that's a little of our social studies. Here's some science. Okay, science. So um, I teach a unit on flight, and I'm passionate about that because I have a pilot's license. So um, I love talking about airplanes and, and how they fly. Um, so yeah, we focus on four forces, and we learn about the Bernoulli principle, which is, is pretty complex. Um, and with that, we, the kids will build an airfoil. So we learn about wing design as much as we can and as much as they can take in. And then um, I give them a block of styrofoam and they turn it into an airfoil. And then we, I have a little wind tunnel and we put it in the wind tunnel and we see how much lift it will create. So uh, I think that's a neat experiment that they can, they can work on. Um, we have been going to HACO with that uh, and, and seeing airplanes at the airport and learning a little bit about HACO and what they do. 
and um, we, we, of course, do big rare plane contests and whatever we can fit in. I love showing videos and teaching them about G-Lock, which is gravitational loss of consciousness. So we show them <laughs> videos where they make tight turns in a fighter jet and they, you know, somebody will pass out. <laughs> Don't worry, the pilot does it. <laughs> Machines, yes. So uh, with science, uh, so I, I, I don't know if I went over the units. We should try. To. We'll do a simple machines unit. We did a flight unit um, in science, and so with simple machines, focus on the six simple machines. Uh, we will have some fun with these uh, robotics kits called Little Bits, and so the kids will uh, put those together to demonstrate some of the. This is, this is some of my students a couple years ago that were able, it was kind of, it's a tricky thing to get the cars to move and so they actually were Here. pretty successful. All right, <laughs> not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, my legendary line, not too shabby. So they did a good job with that. Um, just to continue a little bit more with science, something else that's uh, kind of a pretty cool thing in fourth grade is we do something called mystery class. It comes from a website called Journey North. And basically what we've been doing, which the kids love, is across the grade level, we group them with friends from both classes. And we pick a time once a week where we have about a half hour or so. And the groups are given a mystery location around the world. So all they're given is a number, one through 10. We don't know the locations, nobody does. And they're given clues, and they need to figure out each week. They get closer and closer to figure out what location around the world they would, that is their mystery location. So what they look at, they'll get something like this. This is the website. So for January 28th, uh, basically they start with photo period, so basically the amount of sunlight throughout the day. And so they'll see their location when the sun rose and when it set. And they'll start to figure out each week, well, is the photo period getting longer? Is it getting shorter? That helps them figure out the hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Then later they um, are able to determine the longitude and the latitude, right? Or right. one of them, right? Just longitude? Well, from this, they should be able to start figuring out their latitude north or south of the equator. Right. And then right. once the spring equinox comes on March 20th, then they can they get a formula to figure out the longitude. So then they, you know, then they can narrow yeah, it down. And then the clues at the end might be things like um, uh, famous mountain ranges that are there, a language that the people speak. It will be something more cultural, and then they can truly start to get on the computer and you know research. Okay, where exactly are we talking about? And they, they get a thrill. I think last year out of the ten groups, we said six, six of them got their Which got their locations it is, correct. It is hard. It's very hard. Some years we only have two two out of the ten groups get it right, and it is a program that. that Seniors do, I mean, juniors, whatever, it's, it's for kids, all, all students, uh, and it's, it's challenging. Yeah, usually when the clues come out, we kind of have a little unveiling party, and then we kind of talk about them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we also do a lot of fun field trips in fourth grade. These are just some examples. Um, Camp Flintlock is the one on top. That They just came last, excuse me, what day was it, Tuesday? This, this, week, yeah. this past Tuesday. So instead of us going there, they come here. For any of you that have dropped off, I don't know Tuesday if you dropped off and saw the gentleman playing the drums, but they come and they set up tents on the back lawn the night before and they put a fire out there and they sleep on the grounds. And um, So basically the kids go from activity to activity and it's things like candle dipping, they dress up in colonial clothes. They do um, bead, necklace bead making. They do quill and ink writing, which the kids loved. Colonial games. Uh, colonial games. So we did, do lots of things with that, and they, they got such a kick out of it. It's cold, but that's apparently I was told that's part of the experience is to be a colonial person out in the freezing cold. Um, that would have good weather. I know, it's usually <laughs> cold to stay in the year. Um, the next one is the Guilford County National Military Park, or I think Guilford Courthouse is what we kind of shorthand it. Um, that's tied with our American Revolutionary Unit. So we go to the courthouse. There's a video portion about the famous battle. There's a museum part where they do a little scavenger hunt. And then we actually walk 
uh, the trail and see a lot of the monuments and we talk about um, just parts of that trip that were I'm trying to think of the word, that were really relevant to the battle and what we're learning with the American Revolution. So it's another one that's a it's really close by, but they love it. It's a lot. They love anything to do, I think, with the history and the, and the American Revolution is huge. Um, we do Pilot Mountain in the spring. That's a culminating trip for our rocks and minerals unit. So we go up to the knob, and we walk around the knob, and we talk about, um, you know, we, we get to see some different rocks, and they do an activity. Usually, Ms. Cook, our science lab um, teacher, comes with us, and so we've got all sorts of grown-ups that are doing different things, which is really fun. Last year, the weather was perfect, so that was awesome. Um, and the last one, which is the majority of these pictures, is our Camp Weaver trip. It's an overnight in May. We leave on a Thursday morning, we drive to Camp Weaver, we stay overnight one night, and we come back usually by one-ish in the afternoon on Friday. And it's a great team building trip. This is the bottom, this is the girls' cabin, so they, they all, we do a girls' cabin and a boys' cabin, and we basically just do a night walk that night. They've got all sorts of team building activities, they learn how to um, start fires either with flint and steel or with a battery and um, brillo pad, still wool. Um, and it, it, they have a blast. It's, it's really, really fun. And like I said, that's a one night thing. It's a big, big trip for fourth grade. It doesn't happen until May, so even if your child might be a little anxious about that, we usually by the time we go, we're good to go. They're excited, they're thrilled. They come back completely exhausted. So luckily it's Thursday into Friday, and then they have the weekend to. Um, bounce back and the food's pretty good too. We found out. Yeah, they're really mac and cheese, all those good things. Now, so. any experienced fourth grade parents know what field trip we've left off this list? You it's wanted cool. to put it on. I said it's, it's not really in high here. Let's do it. So we take we take the kids to the uh, landfill and the uh, transfer station so they can learn about where their garbage goes. It's fine. We it don't is invite fun. our parents on that because it's not very popular. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are on to another okay. perfect fourth grade. Okay. So Chromebooks, um, th up through third grade, kids have worked on uh, iPads, and then in fourth grade is a transition to Chromebooks. Um, and we do a lot with Chromebooks. Uh, we use a Google platform, and so uh, we both have Google Classrooms. We set those up, and uh, Ms. Brown will show, show what this looks like. But I can push out assignments, I can push out information, I can push out websites or activities to the kids through uh, Google Classroom, and um, it's, it's pretty neat. So right now, here's learning about the Mayflower, we're focused on the Mayflower and writing Mayflower journals, and the kids can learn about whatever it is that we're working on. So I use this quite a bit. Um, and Here, we just wanted to show you one of them. So it might be something like this, which is which is a Quizlet. Did I get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and they might do this in Pete's room or my room, depending on. It might be morning work where we say go to Google Classroom and click on the link. And so this is usually Quizlets for vocabulary. So they might do the matching game. And basically, you're trying to make everything disappear, so you have to match two. I can't Help me out. Some of them are covered. I can't say. Uh, oh, an Indian in Squanto. It's right below, right below Squanto. Oh. Thank you. See, and then there we go. Then it disappears. <laughs> if the image. Sorry, I'm really that's good. the only image. Garrett plays Quizlet all the time. <laughs> so, so Garrett for Latin. He plays Quizlet all day long. Awesome. So the idea is that they pair them up and then they all disappear and you can time yourself. And yeah, they can play fun little games. There's lots of other games too. That's the easiest one to show, I think, though. Uh, so Chromebooks stay in the classroom. Well, they, I guess they'll travel maybe around the school with kids, but they don't go home. Um, yeah, and they can log into, you know, with being uh, web-based. They can, if they can't find theirs or whatever, they can just log in using their uh, school email account, school Google, Google account, and use it anywhere. Uh, they can use it. They can actually, you know, access their account at home. I mean, some other things we've done, like if they do a Google slide presentation, which is sort of a PowerPoint, they'll share that with us, and then we can put it up on our projector if they're going to share out to the class, or if they want to share something 
that they want us to see. So it's pretty neat, and they get really proficient with it, which is great because it gets them ready for fifth grade. So they want it to be on the computers. Yep. Yep. Okay, me? Yeah, that's you. Uh, so some, just some fun things that we do in fourth grade that are different. Uh, we get together every Friday, the two classes. Uh, we do collaborate quite a bit. Uh, Friday meetings is one way we do it. Um, with a Friday meeting, we put out weekly challenges. So outside, you might notice outside my classroom, there's, there's always a challenge of some sort of estimation or something like that. Um, but we, we get together and uh, talk about any issues that are going ongoing in fourth grade, try to resolve those. Uh, we celebrate people um, in various ways. Um, yeah, so that's Friday meetings. Of course, we've already talked about Continental Math League. Fourth graders can participate in elementary battle of the books. Uh, Ms. Hines runs that competition, and I think fourth and fifth graders mm -hmm. can participate in it. Um, need an opportunity for them to showcase their reading and to uh, be on a team and then they compete against other schools um, in a final showdown. Mm -hmm. Right, and that happens before school, after school, or during lunch time, so they're not pulled from the classroom for that. That's something extra that they do. Yeah. Um, cafeteria, they do get to sit. Uh, I guess on Fridays they really get to pick where they want to, to sit, but uh, they do have some freedom in the cafeteria more freedoms in third grade. Uh, they get to play Gaga Ball, which is uh, a big highlight. Twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays right now, they can go out and play Gaga Ball. Uh, chess is something that I love, and I've run some camps and things, and if there's a rainy day, then I have chess sets that pretty much every fourth grader can, can get on and play. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to play, play with kids, and I have a chess board of fame in my classroom. So <laughs> people have a few fourth graders have beat me over the years, so they get to have their picture taken and put their name up there, so that's fun. Um, and then we have a program called Boys on the Ball and Girl Charge, which for this year is coming up in a few weeks. And it's a neat opportunity to, for the boys, we focus on topics like friendship and sportsmanship, and we often have upper schoolers come in, upper school students come in and help lead that and help with that. The boys just love uh, interacting with those kids. Freddie Johnson will come in and talk about sportsmanship. He always brings some of his basketball players and the you know, fourth grade boys just play like, high fives. <laughs> and then the girls, you may you want to speak about with the girls. Right, it's Focus Melissa on. Norman. Did I get her? Melissa Norman. Right. We used to teach uh, second grade here. She, she runs that program. Right, and the girls will sit and they'll, she'll just really address issues that might be social for the girls. Um, ranging from you know feeling left out or you know just any any sort of issue that might come up and how they can positively interact with each other and what they can do to kind of um, be assertive but not be overpowering like how they can speak up for themselves and if they see something being bullied how could you solve that or what are some strategies you can use and last year we also had upper school girls that came and kind of would work with small groups to talk them through some of those issues and the girls love it. She has them also talk a lot about what characteristics make them unique and what they feel are strengths that they have. So it's very empowering. It's really, it's really a neat experience. I think we do five sessions, four or five sessions once a week in the spring. Is it four? Mm -hmm. Four. Thank you, Brittany. Um, so that yes, that'll be coming up really soon. Yeah. Exciting. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, I said it all. Good. The last thing we want to just mention are just some leadership opportunities for fourth graders. Student council right now is second through fourth, but the fourth graders are really the ones that I believe the leaders rely on to do a lot of our announcements, making flyers, they'll go to assemblies to do reminders. We have a service, um, a service committee, spirit committee, and a playground committee who's working on some improvements on the playground, so they really love getting involved in that. We are the lower school recycling leaders, so each fourth grade homeroom they're split into groups and they're assigned classrooms that they're responsible for, for the recycling. And uh, we do that usually once a week and they have to keep track of, the, they have to keep track of how the rooms did, they keep track of the data as far as if they were got a home run and everything in the recycle bin belonged there. So they involve some math in that. Uh, and then at the very end of fourth grade, they are really the ones that will do the speaking during our lower school closing ceremony. 
And when we do our fourth grade celebration at the very end of the year, it's all kids, similar to the poetry coffee shop. They do the speeches, the videos are of them, you know, everything, really Pete and I do not get up and speak or do anything, it's all run by them. So there's lots of opportunities. It's wonderful. It is. <laughs> you can sit back and say, it's a stage for uh, and you know, obviously throughout the year there are others, but these are just some that all fourth graders, you know, have an opportunity to join, and it's something that I think is worth noting. And so that's all. That's all that we have. We thank you for coming, and we're hoping maybe if you have any questions or anything you want to ask us, we're we're ready. <laughs> sure. So, what is um, a typical night of homework like in fourth grade? Okay. Well, we I, I think that. We target 40 minutes of total homework per night, but 20 minutes of that is expected to be reading. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then with that, we we generally are going to have you're going to have math homework, um, a packet that we put together and go it goes home on Monday, and usually we say it comes back on Thursday. So um, we think that that gives kids, um, you know, they they learn to plan um, plan ahead if they have things that they're busy with. And So, so there's math, um, and then we have a rotating cycle in fourth grade of uh, spelling, grammar, and vocabulary. So there'll be an assignment each week in, attached to one of those uh, topics. Um, and they would also be given that on Monday. So if it's spelling, Holly, half hour, our assistant, Pete, and I each have a group that's also uh, ability level. So we give an inventory at the beginning of the year. We determine which group your child would belong in so that they're successful and they're, they're being challenged, but not overly so. So we'll meet with the spelling teacher on Monday. They go over the rule and they're given their spelling for the week. And then that's due usually on Thursday, just so we can go over it. And then Friday would be the test. And then the same with vocabulary and grammar. The skills are, or the words are given on Monday. We work with them throughout the whole week and then Friday's a quiz. So it's kind of, they get used to the cycle. So next week happens to be grammar. So Monday we'll do a grammar. Marvell, did that answer it? Yes, so I just want to be clear. Homework in previous grades, you usually have to Friday. So it's different this year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thursday, 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 Thursday. A lot of it is. We want things back so that we can go over them with the right. kids. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. Okay. Well, another piece with math. Ann Brennan this year isn't here on Fridays. So if she's given homework, we want it to come back on Thursday so that she has a chance to work with her group. Mm -hmm. And our math group, we do math on Friday in our homerooms. We don't meet as a group. So that's what, another reason why math would come back on Thursday, because that's our last <coughs> class of the week. So, yes. Okay, we answered all your questions. <laughs> yes? You know, uh, fourth graders don't work with the younger grades as much. You know, we did that kind of, I guess. We, we have not done a lot of partnering up with younger. We, uh, there has been historically some things where we have reading buddies, but it's not anything. Like and then my next question, this is really neither here nor there, but is there any kind of like promotion? Because when I was a long time ago in elementary school, at the end of fifth grade, you graduated kind of and went to middle school. Since it's going to be a big step, leaving kind of the well, that's what our fourth grade celebration right. is. We, we, we don't like to use the word graduation because graduation <laughs> means you're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we just have the fourth grade celebration, which is really a, a night to celebrate the, you know, the time that uh, fourth graders have spent in lower school. Recognize their accomplishments and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's a pretty big night. They get dressed up, I think. Yeah. They get dressed up and yeah. there's a slideshow from the year and different students get up and talk about memories from throughout lower school and um, I don't want to give it all away but it's it's basically what you're thinking about it's like a very nice culmination of the year so it's pretty exciting yes so I have a question about fourth grade that I, I want to address you but I also want to make sure that I address Jillian as well sure. we have had a huge influx of interest in our grade level I'm just wondering like we're already at 17, 18 in the classrooms. Are, I'm a little concerned about overcrowding or like, where are yeah, we? Yeah, so that's a great stand? question. Yeah, <laughs> so we, um, we, 20 is our max in a classroom and um, we would start a weight pool at that point. If the weight pool gets big enough, we'd start, we'd start conversation about a, a different um, 
classroom okay. opportunity. So 20 really will mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. be the most that we would have. Yeah, and the only, we have had a couple of situations, Pete, you can help me remember. I mean, we've had a couple when we've been like 22 maybe. Um, and, and those were situations where families had moved in late in the year and needed a place for the kids to go to school for a couple of months. And, you know, the, the next year was going to be a much bigger class and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So um, we don't, I don't anticipate that being a, a challenge. What I want you to know, though, is wherever we are, we're going to give your children what they need. So, for example, I don't know if it was, was it this grade where we, we had a year in second grade where we were pretty full. Yeah. And I can't remember what, but but we ended up hiring another assistant so that we had five teachers okay. on that Those grade level. Yeah, yeah, when Christine was there for a while. And so things like that, when we're at that sort of point where we feel like we're, we're really robust, but we're not in the place where we need to open another section, but we want to make sure kids are getting what they need. So mm -hmm. um, it's a great question, but we're constantly watching that sort of ebb and flow okay. of... I've just numbers. I've seen so mm -hmm. many like new faces and I'm like oh yeah I'm well in the lower school year. right now I think we are going to have about nine mid year admits which is a lot that for is us. a lot and we are also going to be heavily impacted by a couple of big moves with companies and things right. and so we're watching where that attrition goes and so right. we're we're watching all of that okay. um, great question we're thank you yeah, yeah right. absolutely yeah can I just add on Julian I was just thinking also just to give you an idea so with math the nice thing is with the three teachers those numbers are already much lower because you've got three separate groups and then Holly Hoffauer works with the group that needs a little bit more of the hands-on help. Um, and then as far as Reader's Workshop, Holly is with me during the Reader's Workshop session so there's always two adults in the room during that time that would be, we do a mini lesson and then we go off on conference with students. So there's lots of one-on-one -on -one reading conferences and once or twice a week there's small group work as well. So even though the numbers might be slightly bigger, we still got, I think, a lot of adult help throughout the days in different ways that we do it so that we maximize, um, you know, we maximize the adult help that we have. So I think that helps as well. Also, in the past, when Garrett came through, um, I know that you guys did a great job of rotating, like who had, I don't want to term, use these terms, but like the advanced group and then who had kids who knew maybe a little bit. And like, so you would do like a three month with one group and then it would switch. And so then, so that everybody got access with all the teachers. Mm -hmm. Is that gonna still be the case? Or do you guys now that you've got your, you know, core, now you just kind of stick with. You're, are you talking about math? Are you math specifically or, or reading, if you know, there are different levels for reading or spelling or whatever. Reading is gonna be, I, so, I'm not teaching reading right now, so. Right, so the reading is really being differentiated within the homeroom. Um, so, like I had said before, and I don't know if I did it, I don't know if I did a great job, but um, we do, Suzanne Phillips is also with me twice a week during reading with both classes. So what we do in the beginning is we give a reading assessment, and then throughout the year we give multiple running records. So we just did it last week, we gave a running record, we know at any given moment what level would be your child's independent just right book. And so the way we do that is we differentiate according to what books we let them choose from to do their work. So if it's fiction, there might be four book buckets, and then the students pulling from the different buckets are pulling books on their level. So in that sense, that's how we're doing it. Um, but they're always with the homeroom, just the way the schedule works. Uh, we, don't, we wouldn't group it across the grade level where it would be different ability levels from the two grade, from the two classes. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But the math. The math, right. We, we make sure that every child or every group, every level, is going to have Christine at least once, me at least once, and Brad at least once. Okay. And then sometimes we rotate again. It just depends on. But that's a great question because we don't right. We don't want it to be where they're feeling like they're in one group. And and the, and the groups are fluid. You know, we give a pre-assessment before every unit. So if we get to a unit where a student is really ready to be in a different group in a different level then there might be some shifting and some moving and the kids are we talk to the kids about that that it's not necessarily once you're with a certain group that you stay there i mean we really do try to mix things up great question yes. Times a week. 45 minute mm -hmm. class each, each time. And then, yes, we, we aim for a morning break around 10 o'clock for 15 or 20 minutes. And then 
every day after lunch. Um, yeah, they go outside for 20 minutes. And he and I try, if we can, we take them out at the same time so that the whole grade is playing together. I think there's one day a week where Pete's at a special and that's when mine needs snack and that's probably the only time a week that we don't have a morning recess together. But like you said before, we really try to coordinate that so they're with their friends as much as possible. Um, and they like that. It's a good kind of 20 minute frame break and they run around and get some fresh air and we bring them back in. During, when we do indoor lunch recess, most of the time they can choose which room they're in as well. So again, they're not <coughs> stuck in their home, not stuck, but not in their homeroom, only with their homeroom friends. They can go to either classroom and whatever activity they like to do with, um, you know, they can play chess in Pete's room or they're in my room playing, you know, checkers or whatever it is. I think we're real sensitive to kids that didn't get their class choice that they wanted and so we try to give them every opportunity to go, you know, go across the hall and be with their, their best buddies. No, Julian, not. can you speak? I don't know. No, we've never done summer reading for just, fourth grade. But I will tell you, um, Laura Hines does post the EBOB books right. at the beginning of the summer. For, so for those children who are interested in that, because there are quite a few of them, and they're pretty hefty books, several children will get those and read them through the summer. But there's not required, there's not a, there's not a yeah. required reading. And those books are usually fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's a great place to start. Um, but yeah, there's nothing yeah. official that they need to do. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming in. If you have questions, we... Oh, wait, I do have one question. Yes, please. <laughs> um, blockers. Yes. I know that third grades had to use the blockers this year, but they had communication. Can you tell us what they're able to do with the blockers? Um, so, well, we assign them. I usually assign mine. I guess your kids chose. I assigned alphabetically. I mean, either way. Um, our, our students keep their backpack, snack, and jacket but in there. Four wives. Oh, yeah. oh Dick Horse, sorry. Oh, um, they're not <laughs> no tape. No nothing tape. on the outside. Shouldn't have, have anything on them, the outside. You have to keep them pristine for the next Right. Because they were all excited this year, and we went walker shopping, and then they were eliminated too because they wanted it to be a special fourth grade thing. And so we don't limit, but like we said, nothing that can't be taken down. So no stickers, nothing. They can't fit their coat in it, though. They've got too many. Pictures. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them have the chandeliers and the fur yeah, carpets and all that stuff. That's what I got. Yeah, as long as, it doesn't, as long as it doesn't interfere with what they really need to put the lock of the stuff in the locker, then we're okay with okay. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good question. Well, she was all into it. I'm yeah. sure. I well, I'm sure. sure. That's exciting. Now, yeah. Now, thank you so much. Thank you.